Hey, golf people. Hey, golf people. Hey, golf people. We're back out on course here, and we're testing something a little different for this channel. It's a putter. It's 3D printed. It has something called Sick Face Technology. Sick. And it's got a whole bunch of features packed into it, which we're going to explore today on the show. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to play nine holes. I'm going to compress the drives and the approach shots. But when we're on green, I'm going to talk you through everything I see in terms of looks, feel, accuracy, consistency, everything to do with these putters. We're gonna play nine holes, that means our over under is going to be 18 putts. 18 putts or fewer is ideal, and we're gonna consider that a win. If we go 19 or over, not so good. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's do it. That's exactly where we want to be. Well. A little short actually, so we're gonna have a long putt. We're gonna get a first test of this putter right off the bat. All right, first putt here on course with the 3D printed Cobra. This one is the Agera. All right, maybe Agera. You tell me how to pronounce it. I'm pronouncing it Agera today. But this whole part under here, that's all the 3D printed part, this frame inside, which makes it really light, letting them put a lot of weight here where it counts. So hopefully we'll get these putts online nice and smooth. Now this is a very tough putt to start. This is probably the hardest green on the course in terms of everything falling off. So this is gonna be coming hard and distance control is really what we're gonna test here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Died a little bit before I wanted it to. And now we've got seven feet a little bit of a snake, so it's gonna be a tough start here if we three putt this one. <laughs> Bear down. Wow, guys. Ugh. I'm really happy about that. I'll tell you what made that putt a little easier is it has this line, this very thick line. It's not like colorful, it's dark, it blends in but I tried to keep it right on that target line and uh, the face stayed really nice and square all the way through. I really liked that about it. So I'll tell you what, after that first putt, very happy with the second putt. Let's get to the second hole here. It's Friday afternoon. I'm actually waiting for a big group in front of me. So it gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit more about this putter and the technology that's inside. So first of all, this putter has what they call a sick face. That's sick, dude, sick. Kind of a, a, a weird name, but what it is, is it has descending loft technology, meaning instead of like how a iron would be, you know, as you go down in the irons, they get a little bit more lofted. This is actually the opposite. It's lofted this way very, very slightly. That descending loft is going to give you that top spin, is least what I think is going to happen. We'll find out as we go through the round here. Now, here's what I will say, because I've actually used this putter on a putting green. I went out to Stream Song and I putted on their gauntlet, which is a very, very difficult little putting course. What I had trouble with with this putter was distance control. And you saw it with that first putt that we just had, that long putt. I didn't really get it to where I wanted it to be. It was probably at least four or five feet short of where I wanted to be for a little easier tap in there. Now. I kept seeing that over and over over at Stream Song, and I think that could be partly to do with the fact that I'm not a mallet putter. I generally use an answer style putter. It could definitely be that. But I also think it just has to do with the fact that I've, I've got to put a little bit more gusto. I've got to make those strokes just a little bit firmer, and for some reason I've been a little tentative with it. It just doesn't have quite the pop off the face as my normal putter. That's fine, you have to get used to that sort of thing. Where that comes in really handy is those short putts where I can feel like I can be really strong and sturdy through that stroke and really confident. I just have to trust my line. So there's the yin and the yang of a, of a face that it doesn't necessarily jump off of. Now they say this face has the highest MOI of any putter that they've ever had. And I think what, that, what that's going to help is any off-center strikes, okay? We'll find out again as we progress through the round. Hole two coming. And that is perfection. That's about as perfect as it gets right there. Now, for all you gear hounds, I wanted to show you this. You know I just did a what's in the bag. I was telling you that I play HMB irons. 
Mizuno MP20 HMBs. And you also probably saw my video where I really loved these JPX hot metals. So I've made myself a little combo set, a little wild combo set, four, five, six in the hot metals and the rest are the HMBs. Here's a hole right here where this is gonna come into play because I could hit a three wood, but it's very narrow. I feel much more comfortable hitting an iron. And now I got an iron that I can hit almost as far or further than my three hybrid used to go. Ugh, wasn't great, but you know, it didn't hurt me. Ooh, came out left, but settle. I think we're on the green. I think we are on the green, back left of the green. Yeah. Oh yes. Keeping it straight on line and firm is the meal ticket here. There we go. <laughs> One under in terms of putting. <laughs> we're even par in terms of score for the day. So playbetter.com where I get all my golf technology and many of the golf clubs that you're seeing on this show lately told me that they've got a 3D putter to send me and for me to test it out. They wanted me to be first to test it out. I was like, yeah, okay, interesting. I mean, is that a gimmick? What is, what's Cobra doing here? I do like that Cobra is pushing boundaries with their technology. We saw that with the Rad Speed irons and with the driver this year, and they're doing it even further. I mean, this is probably the biggest leap forward in terms of technology, a 3D printed putter, at least the inside there, that cage inside there is 3D printed. What that does allow for is rapid prototyping. So if you're trying to test quickly what works and what doesn't, 3D printing is great for that. Why they put that into a production design, I'm interested. <laughs> We're gonna have to dig into that further, but it does look pretty damn cool. <laughs> it's a good strike. It's not gonna be a hole in one. It's left of the hole and it's just on the fringe. We'll putt that one though. We're testing putters. As you can see here, I'm just a little short of the green. This putt is gonna come down and to the right. Really speed control is important here because I've come out of the rough. This is where the sick face will really help because it's gonna put that forward rotation on the ball early, hopefully, let's see. Okay, woo, not bad, not bad. I did hit that, what I feel like is a little lower on the face and it's still got that nice top spin. Little tap in here and that's a nice two putt par. We're even par heading to four guys. What was really nice there on the fringe is you definitely want to have a little top spin on a putt and that sick face, sick, which you can see it is. <laughs> it is a little pressed. That sick face sick. allows you to put that on. You'll see guys on the PGA Tour, sometimes they're using a three wood or a hybrid on the fringe. And the reason they're doing that is they want that top spin. There you go. Man, it's pretty on here. I was just looking through the, the viewfinder as I was setting up this shot. It's gorgeous out here. I tried this video a little earlier today at two o'clock in the afternoon and I was sweating. I was hot. The other nine had punched greens and it was absolute disaster. I walked off the course and I'm back out here at 6 p.m. now and it's like beautiful. Well, that's definitely left of where I wanna be. Hopefully it's short of the water. Now you can probably hear them in the background and I tried to get a shot of them, but they're so fast. There's these red, bright red little cardinals flying all around me. And uh, it's wonderful to be out here enjoying a little nature towards the end of the day. It was so hot this afternoon when I tried this before and I ended up walking off the course because not only was I melting out in the sun here in Florida, but the greens were all punched. Hard to do a putting test when the greens are punched. So those are some of the things that happen when you're filming. And in fact, I tried to do the same video yesterday. I told you I was at Stream Song at the putting course and my cameras both shut down on me and overheated because it was so hot. I was melting out there and so were the cameras. So, ah, you know, interesting things happen when you're doing this by yourself out on a course. And uh, it's kind of unpredictable sometimes, but I guess that's also what makes it fun and exciting. You never know what you're gonna get. Uh-oh, <laughs> pulled it. Settle. Uh-oh. 
I flew it out of there. So, not amazing. Not amazing. Okay. <laughs> the putter's the one that's gonna have to keep us from a double here, guys. I've got eight feet. Eight feet, I would say, moving right to left. I'm just gonna trust the line and I'm gonna use the line on this putter to make sure I hit a nice firm stroke. Ooh, the line I wanted just wasn't the right line. Now I might have pulled that just a tad, I'm not a robot, but I hit it pretty much on the line I wanted, just didn't fall. Distance was good. You've got to put a nice firm stroke on it, which is great because you've got to get aggressive. I like aggressive putts when I'm putting, and I like that you have to put a firm stroke on this. It's different from what I'm used to. It doesn't have the pop off the face that I'm used to, but I think it could work for a lot of people. Now, if you've watched this show a time or two, you know that I'm an optimist. The great news is that we're one under in terms of our putting over under, and I feel like the putter is performing pretty well so far. Bad news, we're two over. Double bogey, that hurts. Luckily, we are on what I think is the easiest hole on this nine, and this should be, hopefully, a good chance for birdie. Let's do it. That's, oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. You definitely can't leave it short in that bunker. That'd be a disaster after that last bunker shot. <laughs> I left it short in the bunker. You can see from the trail, it hit right at the top of the bunker. I should have had more club in my hand. Mental mistake there. I will not hit the same type of bunker shot I hit in the last hole. This is gonna be much better, I promise. I'm a pretty good bunker player, usually. There we go. We'll get in the hole. <laughs> That's a tap in. That's a tap-in which doesn't make for a great putter review video, but uh, makes for a decent golf vlog, I guess. Well, with a little tap-in like this, it makes a great opportunity for me to talk about the Arcos grip that comes installed. I really like the grip on this putter, actually. It's a nice, fatter grip, kind of like a super stroke type grip. Beautiful colors. I do like this neon yellow. It's uh, very modern, but I like it. But what this Arcos Caddy grip does is it links you into the Arcos system, the Arcos Caddy, which is very, very intelligent in terms of keeping track of all your shots on course. I really like it. I, I got it with the Rad Speed and with the Ping G425 this year, and I really like having the Arcos system. A nice little bonus there. So we're gonna put this Arcos grip to the test. It's nice and flat. Let's see if we can use this like a pool cue. Boom. <laughs> I apologize to the green keeper. All right, par three coming. It's been a while since we hit a green. We've got a bunker right in front on this like sucker pin. And uh, if I'm in another bunker, my wife's not gonna believe I played golf. She's gonna think I went to the beach today. <laughs> and I miss another green. I'm on the fringe here which is definitely uh, a stretch, but we're gonna go ahead and putt this anyways, which we're gonna have to go way uphill here. Everything's coming uphill. Again, distance control, especially on a fringe, is gonna be really important with this one. Mm. Poor effort. Poor effort there. There was a lot more fluff than I was hoping there'd be. A lot of crap on this ball too. Okay, well here we go. Here's a range that's really important to me. This is about a 15 footer right here. It's fairly straight, but I think it's gonna dive a little bit left at the end. Again, distance really important and getting it online. I got aggressive there. You want to see me four putt on a putting video? I don't, but I've got a chance at it here. Okay, this is where we've really got to bear down and concentrate. Okay, 
straight back, straight forward, bottom of the cup. Ooh, phew. <laughs> I did not want a four putt on a video about testing putters. That would have been really embarrassing. Again, I like the fact that I feel very confident going straight back and straight through all of these putts. What I'm still having trouble with, and again, it might be me and the mallet putters, is distance control on those longer putts. Now, granted, out of the fringe, we won't count that one, but on that 15-footer, I really smoked it. So it's been really hard for me to get that distance judged with this particular putter. But again, could be me. What I will say here is that with this face of this putter, whether you hit it in the middle, toe, or heel, it all feels the same. Now you might think that that's good, but for me, I kind of like to know if I hit it in the sweet spot or not. And I don't really get that feedback here with this putter. The good part of that, the flip side of that, is you're gonna get a consistent distance no matter where you hit it. That's that high MOI. You're gonna get consistency out of that MOI. All right, so again, with everything, there's a little bit of a good and a little bit of a bad. So you've got to evaluate your own game and what means the most to you. Is, is control more important or is speed and distance more important? Is feel more important or is consistency more important? All right, guys, you got to make that choice. We're now three over, but in terms of putting, we are one under now. All right, we just dropped a stroke. Oh, but that's right. Oh my God. That's on the other. Oh, it's on the other fairway. <laughs> you're gonna get a bonus here, a two for one, because not only are you gonna get to see the seventh hole, but you're gonna get to see the eighth hole too. <laughs> the, probably the only hole on these 27 holes we have here at Carrollwood Country Club in Tampa where I could actually play up this other fairway. Usually there's some sort of really bad trouble. The woods are deeper or there's out of bounds stakes, but here it actually is okay. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go four iron here. This four iron gets nice and high, and I've actually got a lie that's kind of sitting up. I'm gonna try to hit it back over the trees, get us back onto the right fairway. Would be nice. Oh, wow, I love these clubs. Yeah, we're back in position there. Ooh, I hit that flush, it felt good. Guys, I did not have that shot in my bag uh, with my other set of clubs. It's only since I've switched to these hot metals, you can see the height I'm getting with them, hopefully on the shot tracer. They're pretty sweet, all right? We're back in unbelievably perfect position here in the middle of the fairway. All right, we haven't hit a green in a very, very long time, so I think we're overdue to do that. Absolutely perfect position. Another bunker in front. I do not want to go in that bunker. Oh, I'm in that bunker. I hit it fat. No, I'm over. Oh, I'm over. It's actually a great shot. On the green. Surprised myself there. Good thing I took an extra club. Again, wisdom of age. I'm, it's getting a little, I'm getting a little tired here towards the end of the day. We've got 20 feet. If we could drain this, would be sweet. It would be very sweet. It should be moving uphill, but it's right on a crown. So if we go past the hole, it's gonna run out for a while. And I believe it's fairly, believe it or not, pretty straight. It might be moving just a little right. We'll, I'll get another better look behind the ball as well. Wish me luck, guys. We would love to have a birdie with this putter. Good speed. Oh, man. I just didn't want to trust it was gonna move. It's, it's tough with the shadows down here. That I'm really happy with the speed, and here's why. I know I didn't hit that center. I hit that more towards the heel there, and it still went as far as I was hoping it would. That's really nice. That's two putts. We are still one under in terms of our over under for putts. We are, what are we still? Three over on the round. Anyways, we're having fun, right? It's a better drive but it's leaking a little bit towards that bunker. Woo, we'll see. <laughs> Not making it easy on myself right now. Where did it go? Oh, a longer putt than I wanted.
Or did I want a longer putt just so we could test this putter? <laughs> One putt would be ideal here because I really don't want to put another bogey on the scorecard, guys. Oh, it's good. It's tracking. Oh, it, it broke off right at the end. Definitely not the putter's fault. Exactly where I wanted to put it. I guess I could have hit it a little bit firmer, maybe. And I think that's been the story of this particular putter is just not quite hitting it firm enough. Again, I'm just not used to it but I don't think this would be the putter for me. Now, the good thing is they do make an answer style putter. They actually make three different styles of putter. I've got one that looks a very similar to my Scotty Cameron Futura, one that's a mallet style, which is really close to my Bobby Grace, and one that's more of an answer style, which is the current putter that I'm playing right now, my Sax Parente. So they also have arm lock versions of this putter, so there's a lot of different options for it. This option, probably not the best for me, I can tell already. I can't wait to get another one and try it out, but I will say a lot of people are gonna have some confidence with this putter because it goes right on. I haven't missed being online. I haven't seen that face twist at all. I think a lot of people are gonna appreciate that. That's a very good start. Right down I-95. I think it's a greening regulation, but we're gonna have that big long putt that I talked about. That was the very safe shot to the middle of the green. Okay, longer putt here, probably 25, maybe 30 feet. Going uphill, moving right to left. Let's see if we can nail that one long putt we wanted, or worst case, we go home with 17 putts, which I won't be too, too sad about. Let me get the camera placed here, and let's see if we can make a good stroke on this one. It's a bumpy road here. This, is, this green is the one that's probably in the worst shape in terms of pitch marks and holes left over from the aeration a few weeks ago. Speed's so important here. I hit it too hard, I think. Settle! Woo! Just like we started with a knee knocker, that, this one's just a little shorter. This is five feet. The other one was eight on the first hole, but I want to end strong. Okay. Phew! I did not want a three putt to end this video. That would have been very embarrassing for everyone involved. All right, but we did it, guys. There's a guy playing behind me. I'm going to get off the green and then we're gonna wrap up and give you my final thoughts here. All right, final thoughts here on the 3D printed Ajera putter from Cobra. Cool factor absolutely is there, no doubt about it. Is it really useful? That I'm not sure to be quite honest with you. But in terms of performance, I really liked the confidence I had anywhere from 10 feet and in. I felt very confident standing over those putts and I don't think I missed anything from like six feet in, did I? Remind me if I did down in the comments. What I will say I didn't love is distance control. I've said that throughout this video. The feel and the distance control for me was a little bit lacking. But again, for folks who need more consistency, who wanna put a consistent stroke on the ball, they don't hit it in the sweet spot all the time. Maybe that's really a benefit for them because you're gonna get a little bit more consistent roll out of off-center hits. And having to take a harder stroke at it is going to hopefully keep that ball online a little bit more, at least if that face balance MOI works out the way it's supposed to work out. So in that respect, this could be a really great putter for some people out there. For me, this isn't the perfect model, I don't think and I'd really like to try their answer style putter. In terms of performance, do I think the 3D printing added to it? Probably not. I think that sick face sick. probably delivers more performance with that descending loft, which I really think is cool. I do think there's a lot of technology packed into these putters, and I think it's worth a try. Order one from Play Better, in fact. They've got a 30-day no-risk return policy, so order one from those guys. And if you don't like it, you can always return it. Sorry, play better. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get a lot of returns from that, but really, sometimes you just gotta try it out for yourself. I enjoyed it, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like, and I'll catch you next time on another edition of Let's Play. Let's play.